Welcome to today's session on Heroines of Peace, Nobel Peace Prize Women. The story has often been told of how Nobel had long been interested in peace, but how it was his friend, the peace activist, Baroness Bertha von Sutna, who drew his attention to the international movement against war, which was becoming organized in the 1980s and secured his financial support for her peace activities. The Nobel Peace Prize at their best sets before us an array of great human spirit. The 19 Women Prize winners clearly belong in this category of people. They come from a variety of backgrounds and represent a variety of forms of peacemaking. The earliest of these heroines of peace was the Austrian Baroness who inspired the prize, while the most recent was a young Yemeni woman from Iraq who faced and survived horrific sexual assault and worked towards the abolition of the use of sexual abuse as an instrument of war. The winners include the women regarded as the greatest of her generation in the United States, the scholar and reformer who, has, who was acknowledged as the intellectual leader of the American peace movement. Two Northern Ireland advocates of nonviolence who made a dramatic effort to resolve the long-standing violent conflict in their land. A saintly missionary working in the slums of Calcutta. A Swedish social reformer who became a cabinet minister and ambassador. African environmental activists. A young woman fighting for the right to education and South American women and a Burmese intellectual who led the opposition to a brutal military dictatorship. They were not only of different nationalities and different classes, but of different faiths. Among them were Catholics and free thinkers, indigenous shaman, a Buddhist and a Quaker. They worked against war in peace societies and in political life as humanitarians and defenders of human rights. This small group of 19 laureates represents the diverse paths to peace which the Norwegian Noble Committee have recognized over the years. But they are most interesting in themselves. Each has a fascinating story to tell. They are there are contributions of other women in the peace movement, the wives, the friends, the grandmothers and mothers of the men who have won the peace prize. When the Baroness came to deliver her noble lecture in the spring of 1906, Chairman Lofland now foreign minister at that time, spoke at the banquet 
about the great influence of women in history and how they could change the ideas of war and give men higher aims. It was, however, 26 years later before the second woman, Jane Addams, was honored with the prize. In the first 45 years of the Nobel Peace Prize, only three went to women. And of the 137 Peace Prize awards since, awarded since 1901, only 19 women have been Peace, winner, Peace Prize winners. The committee's archives are open for research up to the Second World War, so we now know that a number of women made the shortlist in the years following the Second World War. There were several well-qualified women candidates who were not named. While it is true that during all these years, it was difficult for a woman to rise to prominence in a male world, the Norwegian Nobel Committees were apparently not without prejudice. What did all these women peace laureates have in common? They were all women of high ideals, prepared to work and sacrifice to bring something better into being. And they labored in the certainty that their objectives would eventually be realized. They all carried within them that sacred flame, which Gunnar Jan perceived in Emily Greenbulch, which inspired them to struggle against odds, to withstand disappointments and defeats, to resolve never to give up. They shared a faith in humanity whether born of religious conviction or just humanism, most displayed remarkable courage. Not all, force, not all of them faced the aimed rifle, as did Aung San Suu Kyi, or had they had to hide from the soldiers, as, does, as did Rigoberta Menchu Tum, but it took courage to withstand the slings and arrows of the militaristic regimes and the press. To quote, in the good fight for peace and the reconciliation, to quote, in the good fight for peace and reconciliation, we are dependent on persons who set examples Persons who can symbolize what we are seeking and mobilize the best in us. That all the women laureates had faith in the power of good is there for all of us to see. Above all, however, what these noble women have shown us is the potential of the human spirit. I hope as you listen to the speeches and lectures, or read them that their words inspire and move to action and take just one step to establish peace on earth.